The law perverted, and the police powers of the state perverted along with it. The law, I say, not only turned from its proper purpose, but made to follow an entirely contrary purpose. The law became the weapon of every kind of greed. Instead of checking crime, the law itself guilty of the evils it is supposed to punish. These are words which in 1850, Frederick Bastiat, a French political philosopher and economist, chose to begin his most famous work, The Law. The key theme of this book is an examination of what happens to a society when the law becomes a weapon of those in power, rather than a tool to protect the rights and freedoms of individuals. While Bastia was writing over 150 years ago, his words on this important subject continue to be extremely relevant and insightful. To understand how the law can become a weapon of those in power, and the effects that arise when it does, we must first discuss what Bastia saw as the proper function of law. When discussing the role of law, Bastia saw it as useful to pose the following question. Since no individual acting separately can lawfully use force to destroy the rights of others, does it not logically follow that the same principle also applies to the common force that is nothing more than the organized combination of the individual forces? In other words, Bastia believed it to be commonsensical that if an individual is prohibited from committing a certain action because it harms others or their property, then a group of individuals should also be prohibited from committing these same actions. With this idea in mind, Bastia stated, If this is true, then nothing can be more evident than this. The law is the organization of the natural right of lawful defense. It is the substitution of a common force for individual forces. And this common force is to do only what the individual forces have a natural and lawful right to do, to protect persons, liberties, and properties, to maintain the right of each, and to cause justice to reign over all. Bastia put forth what is called a negative conception of law. For him, law was a tool to help prevent certain actions, actions which harmed others or their property. It was not a tool to be used to compel or coerce people to act in a certain way, which is called a positive conception of law. When law and force keep a person within the bounds of justice, they impose nothing but a mere negation. They oblige him only to abstain from harming others. They violate neither his personality, his liberty, nor his property. They safeguard all these. But when the law, by means of its necessary agent, force, imposes upon men a regulation of labor, a method or a subject of education, a religious faith or creed, then the law is no longer negative, it acts positively upon people. These days, as is evidenced by the massive growth of government, politicians are largely in favor of a positive conception of law. This bias was also present in Bastia's time, and in his book The Law, Bastia emphasized the danger that arises when the use of law expands beyond imposing a mere negation. One of the most common and serious dangers is the emergence of what Bastia called legal plunder. When a portion of wealth, Bastia wrote, is transferred from the person who owns it, without his consent and without compensation, and whether by force or by fraud, to anyone who does not own it, then I say that property is violated, that an act of plunder is committed. I say that this act is exactly what the law is supposed to suppress, always and everywhere. When the law itself commits this act that it is supposed to suppress, I say that plunder is still committed. According to Bastia, plunder becomes legalized plunder when it is undertaken by those who control the law. Or in other words, when those in government use the power of the police, courts, and jails to involuntarily transfer wealth away from those who have obtained it in a voluntary manner. Bastia believed that the main motivational factor behind legalized plunder was stupid greed, or in other words, the desire to obtain wealth in the easiest manner possible. In order to survive, humans must consume goods, and to obtain these goods one can either make use of voluntary means, which may include being the recipient of charity, but for most people means performing labor, or one can make use of involuntary means, namely using force, fraud, or coercion to take goods from others. The involuntary means to obtain goods is what Bastia called plunder. Following from this, Bastia wrote, Now since man is naturally inclined to avoid pain, and since labor is pain in itself, it follows that men will resort to plunder whenever plunder is easier than work. History shows this quite clearly. As Bastia recognized, plunder becomes much easier when permitted by the law. 
When the plunder is abetted by the law, it does not fear your courts, your police, and your prisons. Rather, it may call upon them for help. Recognizing the danger to society which results from excessive plundering, legal or otherwise, Bastia maintained that plunder must be made more painful and dangerous than labor. It should not be easier for an individual, corporation, or government employee to grow rich by influence in the law than it is to grow rich in a voluntary manner, that is, by serving the needs of other human beings. But to make plunder more difficult than labor, the law must be restored to its proper function. However, Bastia was not naive in thinking that such a change to the law would be easy. Often groups who are initially the victims of legalized plunder try to gain power not to put an end to it, but to take part in it. Men naturally rebel against the injustice of which they are victims. Thus, when plunder is organized by law for the profit of those who make the law, all the plundered classes try somehow to enter, by peaceful or revolutionary means, into the making of laws. As legalized plunder becomes increasingly accepted as a suitable and even necessary means to obtain wealth, its nefarious effects are largely forgotten. The present-day delusion, Bastia wrote, is an attempt to enrich everyone at the expense of everyone else, to make plunder universal under the pretense of organizing it. Bastia recognized that not all legalized plunder was driven by stupid greed, that is, by laziness and the desire to enrich oneself in what is seen as the easiest manner. Rather, there are also people motivated to partake in legalized plunder by what Bastia called false philanthropy. Those driven by false philanthropy believe legalized plunder to be the best means to alleviate poverty and suffering. When a politician views society from the seclusion of his office, wrote Bastia, he is struck by the spectacle of inequality that he sees. He deplores the deprivations, which are the lot of so many of our brothers, deprivations which appear to be even sadder when contrasted with luxury and wealth. Perhaps the politician should ask himself whether this state of affairs has not been caused by old conquests and lootings, and by more recent legal plunder. But the politician never gives this a thought. His mind turns to organizations, combinations, and arrangements, legal or apparently legal. He attempts to remedy the evil by increasing and perpetuating the very thing that caused the evil in the first place, legal plunder. While Bastia deplored what he considered false philanthropy, he was not in any way against helping those in need. Rather, he believed that the alleviation of poverty and the provision of services, such as education, could be done most effectively in a voluntary manner, as he wrote in one passage directed to the socialists of his day, but which applies to anyone who favors massive government intervention in society. Socialism, like the ancient ideas from which it springs, confuses the distinction between government and society. As a result of this, every time we object to a thing being done by government, the socialists conclude that we object to its being done at all. Bastia continued by writing, We disapprove of state education, then the socialists say we are opposed to any education. We object to a state religion, then the socialists say that we want no religion at all. We object to a state-enforced equality, then they say that we are against equality, and so on and so on. It is as if the socialists were to accuse us of not wanting persons to eat because we do not want the state to raise grain. This belief that if the government does not provide a certain service, then no one will is still prevalent today and helps explain why so many people favor big government. Bastia suggested that the belief that only governments are capable of providing certain services arises from a perverse view of humanity a view which maintains that free individuals lack the compassion, concern, and capability to help those in need. And to conclude, we will quote Bastia, who pointed out the absurdity of this belief by posing two questions. If the natural tendencies of mankind are so bad that it is not safe to permit people to be free, how is it that the tendencies of these organizers are always good? If we are free, does it follow that we shall then cease to associate with each other? to help each other, to love and succor our unfortunate brothers, to study the secrets of nature, and to strive to improve ourselves to the best of our abilities.